Welcome to the Great American Adventure. Or I should say the Great American Adventure series. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> I'm kayaking, of course. But seriously, I wanted to start with where it all began. I wanted to get back to the reality of what spoiled me and started me on my journey to eventually go down the Mississippi River that started all with a kayak. I couldn't afford a kayak. As a matter of fact, I had lots of adventures with canoes that I'd rather not remember. And I don't remember most of them. And that's a good thing. Because while there are people out there that can canoe, and I'm sure you can, canoe like a kayak built for two or however it goes, I can't. Every time I got in a kayak, I over went the side or I went that side or this side or whatever side it was and it just, I gave up. But sometime less than five years ago, I saw an advertisement for a kayak. It wasn't this kayak, but it was like this kayak. It was open cockpit. Now, open cockpit means that there's nothing in front of me. There's nothing behind me. There's nothing on the side of me. As a matter of fact, it's pretty open. Now, you would say, well, that's a canoe. In a way, you're right, because an open kayak is a lot like a canoe. Only what we are calling this particular kayak as an open cockpit kayak really is what the natives call umiak. An umiak is a cargo kayak, an expedition kayak that is meant to carry not just me, but gear in the back, gear in the front, people here, people there, carry lots more than just one person. You see, a kayak was originally designed as a frame with some animal skins pulled tightly around it and pretty much slicked over with grease, you know, of some type or whatever it may have been to make it waterproof, and the hunter was measured so that he would have only a certain amount of room on his side, which was only about a fist, and a certain amount of room in front of him, and a certain amount of room in the back, and that was it. Wasn't room to carry the cargo, wasn't room to carry the animal. He was meant to just go out and hunt. And that's what an original kayak was in the first place. Those original kayaks were framed. They were used with wood usually, although there's been noted some other types, but usually it's wood because wood was common, and animal skins because that was the most common thing that was around. They didn't have plastic in those days. They didn't have prefabricated, you know, molded, jetted, you know, kind of flat, sit on top kayaks that we have today. But that was what they did. Now for me, I didn't like the idea of going, hold your nose, woo, and rolling over in a kayak. Now, kayaks, in the original sense, with the Aleutian Islands and uh, the Inuit and the Inupik and all the 32 other tribes of what we call, as one tribe, Eskimo, they all had the ability to take a splash and come back up. They could roll over their kayak, they could lean in their kayak, they could do all kinds of things. Well, in an open-faced kayak, or like this, an umiak, you don't want to do that. Because if you roll over, everything goes falling out. So it's more like a canoe or a dugout than most people would give credit to. Except for the difference between a kayak and a canoe is a canoe is flat bottom. A kayak has a rocker in the front and the back. And a kayak has a two-faced paddle where a canoe is meant to be pulled one side and then the other side and then the other side. Man, that just wears me out already. I'd rather do it this way. As a matter of fact, I get my paddles real long and I just kind of do it this way. Some people go like this and they look like windmills. But starting this video series as part of Vidivo, which is what I do, video devotionals, I wanted to start reminding people of the great, I mean great, got to put my hat on for that, Do -do 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 -do. the great American adventure that you're on because really every day you're alive isn't that an adventure I mean come on now 
It's not always boring. There's always something going on in your life that's important. There's always something to do, something that inspires you, something that makes you get up in the morning and go, yeah. Of course, if you're not a morning person, you go get up in the morning and go, oh. <laughs> Ick, eh, eh, whichever way you go, eh. But really, for me, I wanted to start this series before getting out on the water to record it because this is where I began in a living room. This is how I started, buying a cheapest, most inexpensive kayak that I could find that had everything I needed. It had a paddle, it had a chair, it had a pump, it even had a patch kit. And that's what this is. The Intex Explorer K2 is my first kayak that I ever had. And I named it Kayakanoo as a cross between a kayak and a canoe because I said that it was a hybrid. And this particular brand of kayak is a knockoff. It's patterned after and it's styled after another kind of kayak that is kind of famous and it's an open faced. It's the Sea Eagle 330, which was the number one selling kayak in America for a long time. And then cheap kayaks came out, cheap. But Starting this way, in this introduction, I just wanted to get a handle and a feel for what we're going to do to let you know in this series what it's about. And it's going to be about the Intex Explorer K2. It's going to be about kayaking and, you know, talking about how to paddle, you know, and maybe how to enjoy yourself more than just go by the kayak and sit in it and, you know, paddle across and back. There's a lot you can do in a kayak, which includes standing up and standing up paddling. You can lay down and take a nap. You can eat, drink, and be merry. You can even do things that are really weird that I'm not sure I want to do it with this one yet, but I'll try it just so that I can make a fool of myself. But it is technically, you can stand on the tubes. which I just now let some air out. I'm not sure where I let the air out. Oh, it's on the floor. So you could stand on the tubes. Now this particular kayak is kind of quirky and jerky and it's got a lot of minor issues that are design flaws that are part of, oops, here we'll do it. So much for that idea. Okay, just to prove to you that this does work. If this were an emergency, you'd be dead. Oh, come on. There we go. See, it works. It'd be louder than that if I didn't want to wake up my neighbors, but the kayak that I purchased, the Intex Explorer K2, its design was not meant to be for whitewater or for long lasting. It was just meant to be for fun. It was actually a toy boat. That's why they're called bathtub boats. This is actually a perfect example of a bathtub boat. The Challenger K1 series was the first and the Challenger K2 is the second that were real popular and a lot of people like them. They're green boats that are made by Intex and they're cheap. About $69 to $100. And this one's 100. But the difference between this one and the others is that this actually outperformed its design. Because it was a knockoff, the design was made in such a way that it actually became a quality cheap kayak, if you could figure that one out. Now, a little few things had to be adjusted in order to make it work for the Mississippi River, so I made adjustments. But when I first bought it, I wanna let you know exactly what I did. I want you to capture the moment of the great American adventure for your own life and for your own set of circumstances, whether you buy a canoe, a kayak, a boat, or whatever you're doing. But I went and I bought the kayak and I sat back and I thought about it and I just imagined being out on the water. And you know, I fell in love at that moment. Suddenly it was like, Yes, and I had the paddle in my hand, which I can't do right now, and maybe we'll do that later when we get out on the water. But I was suddenly caught up with the idea. 
man, I can be out on the water and I could go camp over there. And I could go camping over there. See, I don't fish and I still haven't fished, but I could be going over there. And I could be going over here. And I could go distances that I could not do before because I had to drive around the lake or I couldn't drive to where the water was still going. And being that I don't swim that good, which is why I got my uh, PFD on even inside the house, <laughs> and I was suddenly, my eyes were big over the possibilities of everywhere I could go camping because that's why I bought a kayak. I wanted to go kayaking, but more than that, I wanted to go camping. I wanted to be far away from people, not parked right next door to another RV, which I've never done, but you know, it's just kind of, now I've a couple times paid for those, you know, like developed parking spots where you got people all around you. Eh, I'd rather put all my gear in a kayak and go out of here. So when I first bought my kayak, the first thing I did, I just laid back thought about it that night my wife thought I was crazy and I slept in it <laughs> let that thought take you somewhere I fell asleep in my kayak and I stayed asleep all night it was like sleeping on an air mattress yeah <laughs> so we're gonna end this introduction to the great American adventure the kayak series right here and right now because I'm just testing this out and I'm practicing with it to get it going so that we can, you know, get out on the water and start doing what I want to do and what I wanted to do on the Mississippi, which was to record a lot of videos and then record some other things for the Mississippi River Preacher. But the main thing was to, I wanted to start talking about what it's like with the water and all the different things that I know newbies like me are so enthused in. We want to learn, you know, water, trails you know we want to learn how to read the water not just learn how to walk on you know land and see footprints but to see how the water moves and manipulates and does things and that's what for me is exciting about the great american adventure series is that there's always something more to what we're doing it's not just a bare grist experience where you know hey let's just shock everybody or let's just do it where you know it's a survivalist but sometimes it's like improvising little things Sometimes it's like doing odd things, like having water noodles, you know, and applying them to your boat, wherever you may use them. Learning how to discover and uncover the untold wealth of inspiration that once you get inspired of feeling free to do what you want in your own kayak, then you can go anywhere and do anything you want to do. Because you're not limited then by money, which was the one thing that stopped me from kayaking was it was always a rich man's sport. And then when it started becoming available in box stores, hey, I went out and bought the Intex Explorer K2. And I loved it, fell asleep in it, and the next day I named it Kayakanoo.